I'm with Michael Emmanuel in Bethlehem, but who is from Canada, and we're talking about the death of Queen Elizabeth II. She's not just the Queen of England, but also the Queen of Canada as well, isn't she, Michael? Yeah, that's right. That's uh, actually most people tend to forget this. I was even talking about it with my students today in uh, our uh, politics and economics class, and most of them were surprised to hear that we call her the Queen of Canada. When you go to Canada, we don't know her as the Queen of the United Kingdom. We know her as the Queen of Canada. She's uh, in any government building, in uh, the Lions Clubs, uh, or anything like that. She's on our coins as the official monarch of Canada. Has she visited Canada as well? Oh, many times. The, uh, the last time, I think it was a little bit before when I was born, and actually where I live in Ontario, in the Niagara region, a massive highway was constructed for her so that she could drive. Uh, it's called the Queen Elizabeth Way, and it, and it basically goes all the way from uh, Niagara-on-the-Lake to Toronto, and it, it took her on a route that actually was meant so that she could get a great view of Lake Ontario, one of our, our great lakes there in Canada. And the, the funny thing about the, the, the way that the highway was constructed is that while it was constructed for her benefit and for, and, and for all of that, it actually has become an extreme inconvenience today because in order to get her the best view of the lake, the highway cut through some of the, uh, the cities along the way, particularly the city where I come from, St. Catharines, which has just caused disaster in the city planning there. So nothing against Her Late Majesty or anything like that, but just a little funny thing that's happened because of that. Yeah. So Great Britain has got a new king, so has Canada got a new king? now? Yes, yes, exactly. So as she was the Queen of Canada, so now King Charles, uh, I believe King Charles III, he is now the King of Canada because the, the monarchy is our head of state in, in Canadian, uh, very similar to the British system and same in New Zealand and same in Australia. We differentiate between our head of state and, and our head of government. So King Charles will now be our head of state and our current Prime Minister, Justin Trudeau, whoever follows after him, is our head of government. How are Canadians feeling at the moment with the loss of Queen Elizabeth II? I think overall, yeah, Canadians would be in a, in a state of mourning. I think, you know, most Canadians, myself included, this is the only uh, monarch that we've ever known. I mean, she's been on the throne for 70 years. So, you know, my parents and th their generation, this is the only monarch they ever go. It, basically, it's been since my grandparents that we've even known another monarch. So she's been quite the figurehead and, and quite a, a representative of the uh, of the culture, the tradition, and the sort of almost like the definition of what Canada is, very similar to the United Kingdom. And so overall, I would think Canadians would be, yeah, in a time of mourning. There are those, and there always have been. I think it's the same in the UK. Those of the more Republican, uh, the small are here, not referring to the American political party, but those who, you know, are anti-monarchical and say this is just a symbolic thing, it's a, for a bygone era. I don't think that anyone would be rejoicing or happy, but um, there are those who have never been fans of the monarchy in Canada. But I think overall, Canadians are enamored mm. by the monarchy and whenever she comes or whenever any, any of the royal family come to Canada there are large crowds out to meet and to greet them and to, and to wave them in and welcome them. Mm. So the Queen and the royal family are really loved in Canada? Yeah absolutely in fact I was reading recently how the Queen would always actually I think a, this was a comment that uh, Justin Trudeau had made that the Queen always referred to Canada or coming to Canada as coming home and so we certainly never saw her as a foreign monarch you know we never got into that rebellious spirit that the Americans did you know she was always our Queen and yeah, we certainly have that uh, sympathy and, and love for the Queen and for the monarchy. Is this one of those memorable moments in history when she died? I think certainly so. I mean, just even just statistically speaking, you know, she was the longest reigning female monarch in, in modern history. Maybe, I mean, ancient history, it's, it's harder to tell because numbers get there a little fudgy. And certainly one of the longest reigning monarchs in, in a long time and even in general. So it's historic for that, for that factor. And just the British monarchy, well, and the Canadian monarchy in that sense has been just one of the most successful monarchies in the modern world, just for maintaining stability, maintaining its presence maintaining its dignities, whereas other European monarchies have, have faltered and lost their significance. You know, the Queen and the royal family there in Windsor have just maintained a steady presence as a representative of the Westminster tradition. And so the fact that she has managed to maintain it through all of the, the cultural shifts that we've seen over the last century and half century has been quite a major feat, and it will be very interesting to watch how Charles takes over and if he'll be able to maintain that, that same dignity and that same respect that she held and that she commanded. Where were you when you heard the news that she died? I was studying in a cafe 
I'd heard suddenly from uh, people in the cafe, did you know that the, that the queen is, is, has been taken ill? And so I quickly looked at the news and found that uh, her family was assembled around her at uh, Balmoral and just was following along. And actually, that's when I, I messaged you and said, have you heard what's going on with the queen? And then very shortly after, you told me she died and I was looking it up and it was just shocking because, you know, obviously, you know, she was 96. So we all knew that no one lives forever and that this was a, an inevitability. But yeah, she had just been such the steady presence. It just it just kind of didn't hit home at first. Is this really the case that this the queen that I'd grown up with since uh, you know been born the only monarch ever known really she had she had passed away she was just that sort of a steady presence yeah. so this is a story to tell the grandchildren that you were in the holy land when the queen died yeah 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 you know it's been uh, one of those things that you know I was here when covid hit I was here when the queen died you know it was you know, not the kind of place that you would expect but yeah that, that certainly is one I have friends who were actually uh, in London for a little bit of vacation so they too have quite the story because they just went to go see Buckingham Palace and all the sites around London and Abbey Road and next thing you know they've been roped into now going to the palace and and seeing the uh, the cannons being shot off and, and and watching all those events so I think a lot of us will this is one of those events where you remember where you were when you heard this news. And she's been queen for 70 years. And like me, we've never known anybody else in, in royalty, have we? No, I, uh, not at all. I can remember learning about her when I was when I was a kid, when I was just, you know, three or four years old, that uh, she was the, the the queen of Canada. And, and ever since, you know, just been that, that steady presence. So this will be very interesting. It is exciting in a certain measure to uh, to have a king. And, uh, you know, I'm sure in Britain, they're, you know, they're getting ready to change the lyrics to uh, God save the queen, back to God save the king. And in Canada, we'll have, you know, our the various rituals of government and of state that uh, some of the wording will have to be changed. But it will be interesting and exciting to see what uh, a king holds for the future. Now you're a teacher here in Betsaho. How are the children, the Palestinian children, feeling about the passing of the Queen? You know, in certain respects, because of this long presence she's had on the international scene, she has somewhat of a celebrity status beyond just being a monarch. And so some of my kids in various grades from seventh grade up to high school had heard of it and knew of it as a, as a tragic event and knew of it as a shocking event. But overall, I would say that, that most of them weren't entirely aware of everything that was going on. And so I had to spend some time explaining what the significance of this event was, which may, may come as a little bit of a surprise. Well, a surprise surprise and not a surprise. A surprise in that, uh, obviously, Britain has had a large impact on the modern history of the Holy Land with uh, what with between the relationships between Israelis and Palestinians and, and the Balfour Declaration and the, the British Mandate at the uh, end of the 19th and into the 20th century. Uh, so Britain has obviously had a big impact here. And yet at the same time, not surprising because, well, oftentimes middle school and high school students can be somewhat uninformed about events that are going on in the world. Mm. And now Prince Charles just recently came to Bethlehem. Did you get a chance to see him when he came to Bethlehem? No, unfortunately, I did not get a chance to see him. I, I can't remember exactly what I was doing, but uh, I, I don't know if I, I was busy at uh, university or if I was busy with my school, but I, but I never did get a chance to see him when he was here. Yeah, I got the chance to see him. Oh, lucky you. <laughs> in Bethlehem at Manger Square, and I actually got the chance to speak to him as well. Oh, there so you go. So I, I basically said something like, welcome, sir, here to Bethlehem. So you've met the king now. And huh? he spoke to me, and he yeah. spoke back to me. He said, oh, I nearly didn't get here. So, <laughs> so I just treasure that moment that yet I can say now I've spoken to the king. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, the closest I've gotten, it would be once shaking the hand, I think, of Stephen Harper. So yeah. uh, not I haven't gotten too close to the monarchy before. <laughs> uh, now, the queen was iconic, wasn't she? Known all around the world. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, I was just listening to a little bit of some commentary by one of the uh, more famous Canadian these days, Jordan Peterson, as he was sort of reacting to it in a question and answer period at a uh, lecture he was giving. And he was mentioning how what a powerful figure that she's been and that she's gone through. What is it now? Been 13 prime ministers, maybe so, something like that in, in Canada. Mm. And just there's something in the fact that all of these, these men and women that have become, you know, taken on these powerful political roles, at the end of the day, they had a figurehead who they were responsible to. And that it's just a, a testimony to the system, to the Westminster system, that there hasn't been a prime minister in either Canada or the UK who have really tried to test the limits and see how far they could go before you know, the monarchy would step up and say that that's too far. And that she just held that respect with them all and thus maintained that presence internationally. Like, I don't know that there is a world leader here in, in the world today who is who's looking and saying that uh, they are happy that she's gone. I don't, maybe North Korea, but who knows about that? Mm. Yeah, uh, all around the world, you know, from from. Putin Putin to European leaders to uh, Middle Eastern leaders, she's just very well respected. Mm. Uh, do you think other countries are envious of our monarchy? Hmm, envious. 
I, I don't know if necessarily envious, but I certainly think there, in, in a sense, is something that they, that can be, that can be looked up to or... Um, yeah, I mean, maybe envied in, 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 a, in a lighter sense, the fact that as that representative of a Westminster tradition, which uh, has shown peaceful transitions of power over the last uh, few centuries, and has just maintained a level of dignity and uh, and respect, that, that's certainly something. There's something to be said for that. I don't know, again, 70 years, you know, going coming out of World War II, going through the Cold War, going through all of the changes of the sexual revolution and changes to the, the world economy and all of that, and the fact that people still look to her, and the fact that Going through all of that, you know, there's been some scandals in the royal family, but herself as an individual, there's not really a scandal to speak of. And just to be able to do that for 70 years as a public figure mm-hmm. and the amount of time that she was photographed, interviewed, and and uh, and that all the things that are in life uh, recorded and all of that, you know, that, that's quite a feature, quite a, not even just a feature, that's, um, yeah, that's, that's hard to beat. So I'm sure there are others out there who are thinking, you know, Wow, if only we could have other royal leaders, politicians who could have that sort of dignity over that extended period of time. Mm. Now, the Queen had a real faith, didn't she? It was reflected in her Christmas messages. Yeah, absolutely. And that that's going to be what is me is, is going to be the concern for uh, as Charles takes over and as the royal family continues, you know, in a sense... She almost seems like she was a representative of an older world that uh, still maintained a presence here in the world today, a, a world that still understood that the foundations of the Westminster system in Canada, in Britain, in New Zealand, Australia, really did come out of a Christian foundation and a Christian heritage that principles like habeas corpus and the rule of law and uh, and trial by a jury and all of these things didn't just come out of thin air, that there's a long history of British common law that comes out of Christian legal thinking and that she stood for and that and that I think she represented and protected and you heard that yeah in the way that she'd speak you heard it in the coronation she addressed where she basically says to uphold you know God's church and to uphold his law in the public sphere and obviously you know, the culture of Britain and of Canada has has definitely swayed from that but nonetheless she still held something in, in her role there as a, as a representative of that and I hope to see in the future that Charles will be able to hold the, uh, those standards and be very clear what what the where, where the monarchy stands and what gives it its authority, that its authority ultimately derives from God and not from any ideals of, uh, you know, of the people or of, you know, of humanity or of any other vague or abstract principle. Will Canadians embrace Charles and Camilla today? That's also another interesting question. I think overall they will. I do think there will be the party. We live in a woke culture these days that will say, do we need another male leader, you know, an old white man on the throne? But I think overall Canadians will accept him. And I think overall Canadians are, are wishing them well and are, are hoping for his success. What's your prayer at this time from Bethlehem for the royal family? Yeah, I, I'll just echo what I was just saying at the end. I hope that they stand firm in uh, defending the uh, what the monarchy is, what its role is, that they don't become political because that's been one of the, the, the features and the, uh, the blessings of the monarchy is to have that executive figurehead that does not get involved in the politics of the day-to-day and yet can unite the, and the nation around, you know, what its identity is and what its heritage is, and that uh, King Charles stands very firm. And you know, when he when he has his coronation, that uh, you know, it would very much echo what his mother had done years and years and years ago, several decades ago, saying that you know I'm here to stand on as a defender of of the church, as a defender of the Christian tradition and that uh, and the common law tradition that England has inherited, and that he would be for free from scandal, and that he would continue that that legacy and that uh, respect and dignity that Queen Elizabeth had. Okay, Michael, thank you for your thoughts on Queen Elizabeth II and her passing. Yeah, thanks for having me. Always a pleasure, Paul.